In this video, I'm going to be discussing Saturn in the sign of Aries. So, what does it mean if you have this placement? Well, a number of things. So, let's talk about Saturn first of all. You know, what is Saturn? Well, Saturn is the Lord of Karma. It is an energy where you reap what you sow. What you put in is what you get out. So that's one key principle with Saturn. Another thing with Saturn is it's an area of life where you were given the short end of the stick. There is a disadvantage Place to you and a challenge placed to you to see how you could rise out of that challenge. What kind of work are you willing to do and put yourself through in a disciplined and organized and mature way to achieve your dreams? Saturn indicates maybe some of your you know deepest desires, but these talents may be difficult to discover at first because Saturn is always an area of life in your natal chart which you didn't come in naturally just knowing and super comfortable with. Just like the North Node, it takes time and it takes cultivation and just like fine wine, it needs to age to get a certain flavor. And then after a year, you taste it and I'll give it maybe another year. You know, however, those kind of sewers of wine, you know, do their thing, especially in um, the Melbacks. What are the Melbacks? Well, that's my thing for Napa Valley, California. In um, the great vineyards. So Saturn um, really deals with um, the blood, sweat, and tears that, you know, the persistence and push to the edge. Are you willing to give it all you got when it comes to whatever sign and house placement your Saturn is positioned in? I have a whole nother video on Saturn and the meaning of it in astrology, so do check it out on my channel. I will be sure to link it down in the description below to see the meaning and significations and the discussion that I have to give about this planet because it's really important to understand the planetary energy at a very deep level in order to truly understand what makes you you as a unique um, individual and as a soul and as someone who had soul agreements who came in to learn and grow and evolve of how this planet can show up for you based off of what this planet is all about. So you take the planet, you take the sign, and you piece it together. So we're talking about Saturn and Aries. Aries is symbolized by the ram. It's very, you know, go-getting. It's very initi initiating. It's very pioneering. It loves the chase of things. Um, it's a fire energy. Um, and it is an assertive and impulsive sign. So all of these Aries traits are sort of woven into the Saturn sign as you know you take the sign and you sort of pair with the planet and it becomes a blend it becomes sort of maybe tainted or distorted or um just a mixture in general so the planet is the actor the sign is how it expresses itself in the house area wherever if you have saturn in aries and you're watching this then the house is also something really important to know because that's where you express these Saturn and Aries traits that I'm going to be describing. And the real work that you need to do in this lifetime that you signed up for that's also, you know, huge. Um, and in which area of life that you signed up as a soul to do this work. Um, so let's get personal 
if you have displacement, let's talk about your childhood. Let's talk about you growing up. There may have been a hidden message out there, an unwritten message that you received in some way or another, either through what is spoken to you verbally or, you know, something, you know, like a physical experience or something else, you know, from a parent or authority figure or just in general based off of your household environment and life, that there is this message that life is not fair and you can have what you want. Maybe there was some kind of programming where you were told, oh, you were bad, you were, you know, like you would burn the house down based off of the fire that you have inside of you. That's deep inside of you. That impulsive, courageous energy that you have, that, you know, that motivation that you have to get what you want. Maybe that was squished and denied from you. And as a result of that, maybe you could have a case of projecting what you want and your you know desires and what you crave and the goals that you want to initiate onto others. Now I'll get into that later. Um, but yeah, there's just this message that you just want something and then you were sent a message that you can't have this. You cannot have this. So there is a kind of wounding to your sense of self in your real identity, that you are a person. You are an individual and have feelings and have desires and have an ego. Who on this earth has an ego? Who has an ego? Every single person is raising their hand. Do we all want things in life? Everyone's raising their hand. So, you know, it's not wise to be something that you're not. To pretend that, oh, I don't want these things. And from this conditioning that you can't have what you want. Maybe you lose self-confidence. You lose self-esteem. You lose that sense of empowerment and power within yourself that I can get what you want turns into, oh, I'm not going to worry about it. No matter how hard I try, I can't get what I want. No matter how much work and time and energy that goes into this, that goes into all that I am doing, I can't have what I want. That belief that you may have based off of what you've received or taken in on an energetic, psychological level from childhood. Probably I am making assumptions about the displacement. You know, who knows what, you know, people's childhood was like with displacement. But, you know, it's super important to know that asserting yourself is not a bad thing. Being, focusing on yourself and your goals is not a bad thing, quote unquote. And so don't feel bad and don't feel wrong. Don't feel like you're a bad person or hurting other people when you are asserting yourself, when you're putting yourself first, when you tap into the energy of self-care and do what you want to do and do what you need to do and and pursue your goals or do whatever project or activity that you need to do in your life um and live for the moment and live for you now in childhood maybe the father was aggressive and so you push down 
these areas qualities because you may have been in an environment where people express these areas qualities to you and you probably wanted nothing to do with it. You know, people may have asserted themselves, put in themselves put themselves first and you know did all of these areas things that you were like, oh no, I have a wound from this, I have a hurt from this that I'm carrying around and the pain and the hurt from what these people said or did to me that hurt me. And so it's going to be a rock that you're going to be carrying around. So until you can let that go of the wounds that you may have from people judging you for not being good enough, or you not being worthy of have, being able to get what you want, of your individuality being squashed down. Forgiveness and its function is about releasing something. It's about you releasing an issue like a leaf from a stream and moving on from that, um, you know, from that pain. It is about, you know, releasing that. Um, and so Aries is a sign that at best can have a fight and fight it out and have that conflict and then, you know, forgive and forget and then move on to the next, you know, fight or the next goal to chase or the next venture or the next, you know, adventure or the next quest for whatever it feels that it wants. So the father may have been, you know, aggressive or, you know, something like that. And then the mother might have been, um, I was reading this, I believe it was on AquarianAstrology.com um, when, you know, the writer um, on that website was describing how, um, you know, I mean, the conflict between strength and weakness and what is true strength and showing weakness and expressing strength. This is a dance that you are sort of learning and working with and grappling with your, you know, your whole life. So maybe the mom had challenges with asserting herself. Maybe she was a doormat or didn't really feel that she could stand up for herself. And maybe there's this anger inside of you that goes like, why didn't you stand up for yourself? Why didn't you speak your truth? Why didn't you um, fix this issue that needed fixed and take action on what you want to take action on? Um, and so that may be something um, which has had a great impact on you and left a mark on you in your life. Um, and so there's this challenges, because Saturn is the challenges. So having self-confidence, not doubting yourself, being sure of yourself, believing yourself, having the self-confidence and the belief within yourself that, yes, you can achieve what you want to. You can have what you want to. You can go after what you want to and live whatever life that you want to live. Um, so self-confidence and self-esteem. And another thing is sometimes conflict is necessary. Where um, you need to really be true to yourself and really be authentic and stand up for yourself. And through that, standing up for yourself. And speaking your truth. And then also being open to what the other has to say, then we can find true peace and harmony when the two people are being authentically themselves and holding space for each other and allowing each other to be true to themselves. Um, so, yeah, you know, conflict doesn't have to be an argument. It can be just a conversation where you're not brushing the issues under the rug so as not to rock the boat. But you are speaking to those issues. And you are choosing the option 
of authenticity. Um, and so maybe there's this feeling that is unconscious that you need to control or you need to bulldoze over other people to, you know, get your way and express more of the lower vibration areas qualities that you feel like, oh, I don't have enough power. I don't have enough control. People don't understand me. People don't support me uh, in my decisions and what I want to take action on. Um, and so I don't have as much control. It becomes an insatiable, you know, sort of quest and a desire for control. Um, where you just bulldoze onto other people just to gain power and control. So stop doing that and choose to, you know, accept yourself and live for yourself and know that you can have what you want. So, you know, what is it going to take to release any negative conditioning that you might have received in your childhood that defeats and diminishes your self-confidence? So you're here to learn about being authentic and being true to yourself. And also another thing that comes through here is what's your relationship to anger and conflict? Do you just deny it and reject it and have these strong beliefs that you know asserting yourself is a selfish thing and loving yourself and you know I, I mean it could go either way where you embrace that concept and you're on board with it and, and you believe in it and you are making steps to move towards that and you go at it with full-on intensity um and you feel like you are driven and destined and there's a purpose to um you know living a life for yourself or the other option, the other way that this can show up is you deny what you want, your desires, your true feelings, because it could cause conflict, because it could cause disharmony, um, because it could hurt relationships, or it could make you look bad, or it could, um, you know, really stab you in the foot um, in life. Or, you know, it's wrong to do this. So your relationship to expressing anger is super important because when you deny the Aries qualities, it can show up for you as you expressing the shadow sides of Aries. And so what that could be is, you know, addressing a problem now at a certain stage before it becomes an even bigger problem, addressing the anger, speaking your truth, and expressing the anger and the fury and the fire inside of you and being true to yourself now and not suppressing all that anger, all those emotions that you have and all those, um, and all those true primal feelings that you have and then it comes out of you like a volcano, and it explodes out of you because you can't hold your tongue anymore. You can't hold it in anymore. So it's important to have self-love and to give yourself a big, fat permission slip to express your true feelings and to be true to yourself in the moment, not to wait till people approve of you and people externally give you that permission slip. So, um, you know, really addressing those feelings and the anger that you have inside of you and choosing to show up to conflict, choosing to be true to yourself and show up when conflict is necessary and to have the conflict without the um, discomfort that you feel inside of you where you are denying yourself. You are lying to yourself. You're devaluing yourself. You are hurting yourself and you're not being kind to yourself when you're pushing down all of that energy that needs to be used. Move, whether it be moving around, you know, exercising, whatever it may be, it is not healthy to push down that energy. It would be best to channel that energy in productive ways. Um, 
and you know through exercise or you know or through you know gaining whatever you want you know or however it is um so you strive to be ambitious very ambitious um pioneering you know really having this the desire and working towards um you know knowing how to initiate a goal and to be independent in whatever passion or goal that you have not to you know rely on others but to do it for yourself um and so you may also struggle with being independent um and doing things for yourself being self-sufficient and um you know choosing to be on the path of self-empowerment so putting yourself first in this life and choosing courage choosing to be courageous choosing to be brave to face the music choosing to be bold and dare to dream and dare to go after what you desire um and showing up doing it not in a timid way but in an assertive and self-confident way um so in terms of the body because wherever saturn you know whatever saturn placement it is in your natal chart it indicates some um some challenge when it comes to a certain part of your body so when you deny the you know impulsive aspects of yourself your desires your true feelings that may cause headaches so aries rules the head aries rules the head so maintaining your head it's also important to um, rest your eyes when necessary it's important to drink a lot of fluids and liquids and have enough sleep and all those uh, all those areas related to the health of the head are going to be important for you to maintain and so having a healthy sense of ego that ego makes you an individual ego defines who you are as a unique individual and you apart from everybody else and what you want on the physical material level what you desire what you want to manifest in the world is what the ego can sort of assist the soul so the soul wants you know all these things wants growth and wants all of these experiences and wants to gain so much wisdom and um spiritual insight and then the ego can you know assist the soul with you know knowing how to look in a certain situation knowing what kinds of things in the world that you want so a healthy sense of um, ego of drawing healthy boundaries and all of those things are going to be important so you may feel the desire to go it alone and be independent where you may feel like oh I can't rely on anybody else. I can only rely on yourself. Now, also be mindful that when going it, you know, alone, if you have strong areas energy with this placement and going it alone and being independent, make sure that you're not hurting other people, um, you know, not hurting other people, but um, losing sight of the now, losing sight of the journey, losing sight of the interactions and the experiences and the time that you could share and spend with another um, and allowing the help and support for others to help you achieve your goals. So um, people with displacement can really get themselves to be very single-minded very straightforward, very blinders on, and I'm going all in with this thing that I want to achieve in the world with this, you know, career or whatever it is. Um, and that can be a very good thing and that can work to your advantage, but not when it is not in, imbalanced with, you know, your moments, you know, the feminine aspects of life, you know, relationships, all of it so there can also be problems with authority figures you, you know what is your relationship to authority you may want to just rebel against authority figures and do your own thing and and, and be a rebel with a cause and break out of a certain system and structure because you know when saturn's in aries 
people can often not want to go along with the status quo and instead um, do their own thing and pave their own path and really march to the beat of their own drum and be very entrepreneurial. And so, um, you know, it is being able to also work with authority, but also not allowing authority to squash your authenticity and squash um, your goals that you have set out in the things that you want in this life. So there can also be difficulties with standing up for yourself. And you do this by putting bodyguards around you. You do this by putting yourself in situations where people are more powerful than you because you don't feel like you have enough power and enough strength and enough courage to stand up for yourself. So you block that off and you um, put a band-aid on it and you put a crutch on it by being in situations where people are more powerful than you so that you don't have to deal with asserting yourself and, um, you know, doing all of these Aries like things. Um, so I'm going to be right back. I have to get my eyes. Uh... <sighs> oh. I've got it. Okay. No, I'm fine. I'm in the middle of something right now. Okay. I'll look at it later. No, I mean, it just, it gets more humid. It just collects water, collects water, collects water, so it dries out. So, so there can be difficulties um, in standing up for yourself. Um, so that's something really important. Self-doubt goes along with this. Now, the positive side is that you have the ambition and the desire to go after what you want. And you do this with caution. You do this with wisdom. You do this with maturity. And so you're here to master the mature and evolved version of Aries energy. Aries can get a bad reputation of being very childlike and impulsive and reckless and all those kind of things like that. But you can work towards knowing where to put your energy and what will, will yield results, knowing when and when not to initiate, knowing what is the right way to approach this goal, the thing that, that you want. Um, so you're not just acting on impulse, you're doing it with caution. So either you don't do this and you need to learn to evolve 
into a higher vibration version of Aries, or you are learning to develop the healthy qualities of Aries, the healthy sense of self and individuality. Um, and maybe not having a direction, maybe not having a clear direction and target for where you're going and what is the end goal to whatever path that you will be going on. So having a sense of direction and decisiveness and aim for something that you want is key. And throughout your life, you're going to be doing a lot of self-discovery, discovering who you are. It's important. Now, you may also feel the need to be in control, to be the one in charge, to be the one to take the lead, to be the one to take the reins of a given matter, of a given cause. And these are all positive things that you can do to work for when it comes to you being you and really taking the driver's seat of your life. Um, so there's a strong need inside of you to be in control and you will learn that when you love and accept yourself and be true to yourself, you can tap into the higher vibration version of what it means to be a leader, what it means to be in control. Because when we express the downsides of various energy, the, you know, the, the controlling, the domineering, we feel like we are not enough. We don't feel secure in who we are. And so you're working on feeling secure in who you are in this lifetime. Um, and so there is the desire to take the lead and initiate things in your life. Um, so this may make people more cool, more logical, more rational if people have this placement. So getting things done with hard work and discipline. Now, if you go follow Mel Robbins' work, then her work is all about getting what you want, having self-confidence, not procrastinating. And her work is very practical, very Saturn and Aries. Saturn is structure, practicality, responsibility, um, effort. Um, it rules over the very pragmatic aspects of life in Aries. So Saturn can put a big lesson on the area's qualities that can take the sign and put a very practical spin on that sign. And you can go check out her work where she has the high five um, habit where you're high fiving yourself in the mirror that boosts your self-esteem, that boosts your self-confidence. And, um, and the um, five, four, three, two, one, five second rule where you count down and then you go do, you know, what you said to yourself that you wanted and you take action on that thing or the things that you need to do. So you may also be competitive, very competitive fighting others for what you want. Um, and um, yeah, there is this need that you feel that to get what I want, I need to compete, I need to fight. Um, I need to win a battle. I need to do it all myself. It's, you know, me against you. Um, so that also comes in strongly here. Um, and then another thing is um, taking risks, not being very stuck in stagnation and, you know, comfort zone, you know, living big and taking risks. Maybe there's this feeling like I can't take a risk and you're afraid to take a risk because what if it fails? What if it doesn't work? What if I'm not gonna get what I want? What if all the hard work that I'm doing pays off? So from that, again, that self-doubt, that, um, 
that um, sort of apprehensive, you know, reluctance that you have to achieving what you want. So risk taking is part of Aries energy. You know, go big or go home, you know, as the saying goes. So being willing to take those risks is going to be super important. Being open to growing yourself and going on adventures and experiences will stretch you and expand you and have you further your sense of self, you know, develop your sense of self. And so this sort of journey that you're taking in life is going to be really profound for you. Um, so you're learning in this life because Aries can get a reputation on starting a bunch of things and not finishing it. Um, but you're also learning how to start something and commit to it, to stick it out, to see it through, to put the work and the persistence into it, to really persevere from it and commit to it. Um, and so it's also okay to be vulnerable. It's also okay to be a human being. Um, not a human doing. So b balancing the more feminine aspects of life, the more receptive, um, relational when it comes to, you know, family and, um, you know, the people in your world and connecting with them. And also the yang of, you know, what actions are you going to take? How can I grow my sense of self? You know, what do I need to do to achieve this goal? You know, all those kind of things like that. So balancing up those energies is going to be important and again that self-acceptance and self-love may assist you in balancing those two energies because if there's not self-acceptance for who you are that you have feelings that you have impulses that you have desires and you have things that you want and if there's not self-love then that is where the work needs to be done. So, I hope that you'll take this message as not set in stone. Maybe you can test and measure this in your own life. I hope that you will choose to leave this video with a further awareness of being who you are and the feeling of, yes, I can give myself permission to go after what I want. So be true to yourself and enjoy whatever experiences that you have in your life. Bye for now.